today I'm going to be doing a little uh, internal mag work and I got to pull them off my airplane then I'm going to bring them in to my office where I can have some good light and replace my distributor block inside my mags. Today's project is to remove both my magnetos from my Cessna 150 because I, I'm going to replace some internal parts to it. So I already pulled the three screws off the wires and I'm going to take them off and then I'm going to loosen up this nut right there and a nut right here which I already did so I am going to put this camera down for a minute and I'm going to take my mag off so I got the mag loose and I rotated it to give me a better better shot at my P lead right here that I got to disconnect. So we'll take this cover off. There's the P lead nut right there. And then right above it, there's the ground right there. So I got to get the P lead and the ground off. Take this off and the mags come right out. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so the P lead is off and the ground is off. So this is just on there loose because <clears throat> I loosened them up. You definitely don't want to drop your mag on the floor. So there's the nut. I already took the star washer off. That's off. Now let's grab my mag all right so that's one of two mags off now I just got to go over to the right side and do this one <clears throat> this one's a little tighter because there's the scat tubings in the way but it's, it comes off the same way just got to undo see how See the P leads way down there. So this one, <clears throat> God, I don't even see it. There it is. See it? I'll just undo that. I won't loosen up the mag. I'll, I'll, I'll get it from this angle and get it off, and then I'll take the mag off. There's the mags. I got both of them off. I'm not gonna lie. The right one's harder than the left because of the confined condition that it's in but there's where the p leads connect and your ground right there and the reason why i took them off is i'm going to replace some internal parts so let's get the show on the road what i gotta do is take the distributor cover off so one screw there two three and one down in that hole so I got to take off four screws and then when I lift it up, you'll get access to your capacitor lead, which you'll have to disconnect and I'll show you. Got the four screws out. That small one goes right there below the P lead. So when I lift this up, there's, there, oh, there it is. See the? capacitor wire right there I just got to pull that off and I can lift this entire top off but I can't do it video and so let me pause this for a minute there's your capacitor right there and it's a quick connect it's a quick connect that goes right right there by the points the points are right there so now I'm going to take this distributor block off. So one screw there, one screw there, and my distributor block will come on. Okay, so now I got the distributor block off. Here's my coil right here, my fixed lead. This is where my 
distributor shaft's going to rotate on right here. There's my distributor shaft. It, it rides right on that lead from my coil. There's my drive gear right there. And here's my points right here, right there. So since I have it off, I'm going to inspect everything and make sure everything looks good. And then I'm going to just change out the entire distributor block on my mag. And I'll show you why. If you look at my coil, one lead goes to my points and one lead goes to ground. And if you look there, it appears like it's worn into my contact point. But if I touch it with my finger, it's, it's not worn. It's just a little bit discolored from my distributor shaft riding on it. But that's how it transfers the um, electricity out to your four cylinders. Your distributor rotates and it sends out right here. Let's see. See that right there? There's your distributor. And as that turns, it'll send a spark out to each, each cylinder. You imagine that thing's going real fast, driven by the drive gear. And this shaft is literally riding, riding right there. <clears throat> All right. So the internal looks good. I'm going to go ahead and put my new parts on. You look at this right here. It says for correct alignment of this type of brush, position the coil high tension lead parallel and flush to 132nd below the face. So we want that to be parallel or 132nd below because the distributor lead has a spring so it can float it can float and make contact on my coil so let's just hold this up and see what it looks like do i look flush yes i look flush all right so that's taken care of so here's looking at it a little differently but you could see the two lobes on that shaft right there that actually opens and closes my, my points. Opens my points. So I'm going to inspect that lobe and then I'm going to stop it right there and inspect my points and make sure they look all right. Might as well do all this since I got it open. Here's my new distributor block and distributor and they gave me new screws and new spacers for my mag. So, let's go ahead and put this together slowly. And I'll show you what we have to do. If you notice, there's a left and a right on my drive gear. And there's going to be a left and right and an X on my distributor. And obviously, this is left rotating mag so I have to line up the left on my distributor to the left on my drive gear. I'm not sure you can see the L. I'm having a hard time seeing it and that light is not helping at all. But there is an L and an R and an X hole. So, when I flip this around, I just got to make sure that hole right there, that's the left hole, lines up with the left notch in my drive gear. So, let's do it. So, the distributor's on. That's the left hole lined up with the left line. Now, time to put on the distributor block. And if you see, there's a cutout right there. 
and that cutout goes towards the drive gear. <clears throat> so I'm gonna just stop for a minute. One thing I wanted to show you, see that R? <clears throat> Excuse me. I know I got my left hole lined up with my left slot on my drive gear. So there, there's really no way to put this on wrong. So when that spins 180, then I can get my rig pin into my left hole. So don't, don't fear. It's right. It just looks wrong. So now I'm going to just put my two screws in. The distrib I got the distributor block on. And you know, even though that says right, underneath the left hole is sitting lined up with the left line right there. So what I like to do is rotate my drive gear. I took my drive gear one complete rotation to turn my distributor gear 180. So now the left is still in its proper spot and the rig pins in the left hole. So now what we can do, we'll put the cover back on and I'll use my buzz box again to make sure I am real close to the points opening. To put the outer case back on, don't forget to get your capacitor lead and hook it up right there, and then lower your outer case and put your four screws in. Now that I got my top on, I went ahead and put my rig pin in, and I like to hook my buzz box up. So I'm going to use the green lead and I got the ground right there, right? So the points are closed right now, but I'm going to see if they see how close this rig pin got me. See if I can make just this little bit of turn. Yep. Points are open. Points are closed. Just with that little bit of play in my rig pin. So that rig pin spot on. You know you got it in the right spot. So next thing is take it out and put it on the airplane. Don't remove the rig pin until you got your mags installed. Then you can pull your rig pin and hook up your buzz box again. But that shows you how close the rig pin gets it. Just that little bit of play. All righty. We'll take this out. We'll go bench check it and see how much spark it's putting out. Here's why I decided to replace my distributor. It's very hard to see. But over on that corner, See that burn in there? So I was like, hmm, I must well just replace that. So that's why I'm doing this. Also, look at the difference between new ones and old ones. I really don't know how many hours were on this mag. I got this plane from my uncle, and I'm doing an annual on it, so I decided to just go ahead and do a little preventive maintenance on the mags. So when I, when I take this out and bench check it, I need to remove the engine drive gear. So I got to pull that cotter key and take that nut off. And then my drive gear will lift off because my particular bench check doesn't work with the drive gear on. I have to take it off. So I'll take that off and then I'll hook it up to the bench check and see what kind of performance my mags are going to give me. 
So here's my magneto testing unit right here. And here's why I needed to take the drive gear off my mags. Because it's not built for that gear, but it's built for this one. <clears throat> so both of them are ready to be bench checked. And let's get to it. All right, so everything's connected on my magneto tester and it's left rotating mag. So we'll turn this switch on and here we go. <clears throat> Looking good. That's a good spark. Alright. This one's tested good. Now, we'll go ahead and hook up the second one. Alright, so ops check good. Now you can see, see that gear that's driven by the engine. It's got a slot in it, so it's obviously self-explanatory. Goes on like that. Line the slots up. Put your washer on. <clears throat> and your nut. And then you gotta line up your castellations. And we'll, we'll get these back together and get them on the aircraft. All right, the drive gear's on. And notice the way I bent that cotter pin. That's the preferred method of a cotter pin installation. Bend it up over the stud and down like that. Just like that. That's the preferred method. All right, so I'm gonna take this back to my office and make sure the rig pins go in and the buzz box. So remember I said the right one was hard to get off, harder than this left side. So I decided I'd put the left one on first because it's easier. But what I did was now I just made putting the right side on even harder. So now it's hard to get to my mag over there with this one on. So hint. Put your right mag on first, and then put your left mag on. 